All right, so much of, as we've seen, so much of digital inking with the blob brush has to do with the settings you've used. And so whenever you wanna change the setting for the pencil tool, for the eraser, for the blob brush, you just double click on the tool. And the additional settings we have besides size and pressure or fixed is variation. So if you pick a size and you pick it for pressure sensitivity, you also have to set how much variability within that scale you want there to be. In Photoshop, when we make our own brushes, we do digital painting, this will be something they call uh, the minimum pixel dimension. And then we also have this wonderful tool, which the Photoshop brush does not have, which is deciding how much it should be accurate to what you put down versus how smooth it should be. So just to show this to you, I'm gonna put it at maximum accuracy and I'm going to draw this curve. And you notice how it didn't smooth it out at all for me. Like all that little wobble there, it captured perfectly. I tried to be as smooth as I could, but now if I do that same one, but I set it to be more smooth, I have the same amount of wobble as I draw, but the computer will smooth it out for me and average out those anchor points. And that's the big advantage, I think, having that smooth tool or that smooth setting. Because inking cleanly can be a real chore. And then the pressure sensitivity allows me to do a little thin line like that if I want to, without having to change the setting, but I can always change it. For instance, if my pressure sensitivity setting isn't available there, I can always change it just with the fixed dimension. A lot of the personality of an illustration has to do with how you approach the line art. You know, what kind of lines you like. How curved are they? How thick are they? And because I worked for many years as an editorial cartoonist for newspapers, I was just very aware of what different cartoonists did, whether they were sloppy lines, technical lines, how often they shaded, difference between something like Calvin and Hobbes versus Foxtrot, for instance. Everything's kind of intentional and it goes to the, the overall style of that cartoonist. And I like being able to work as an editorial cartoonist because it, it's this skill set, right? It's lines and then sometimes colors, but it's just trying to communicate something directly. But when I started doing editorial cartoons in the 90s, 1990s, I uh, was very unsure because like I said, I have a very sketchy line. So I actually did it all in mechanical pencil and then cleaned up the mechanical pencil as much as I could and then scanned it into the computer. And then in Photoshop made it look like ink. And it took me about a year and a half before I just realized I just need to ink it, then scan it into the computer, then clean it up. And then it took me about three years after that to realize I can just draw this in the computer. And there's no right way or wrong way to do it. It's just knowing how to control the, the art tool that you have.
And it depends on the job now if I draw something by hand or not first. Or if I ink it digitally, or if I make it a vector. But for the coloring book, it definitely makes sense to start with vector line art. Now I'm doing these little full bleed sections every once in a while just to give the overall uh, depth to the image. And then with this gazebo, I have a lot of open lines, lines that don't connect. So I need to be aware of that when I digitally color. Ah, this is a tough angle. So when it's a tough angle to, to ink, you can use the rotate view tool, which is under the hand tool, so that you can put things at a an easier angle. Just like when you're inking by hand, you often move the, the paper around to suit the angle you want to use. So you have that ability in Illustrator and in Photoshop when it comes to digital painting. I want to deal with this. I think that's okay. Now notice here, for whatever reason, the, the blob brush isn't merging them. So if I want to clean it up, I have to first hit Command to select them and Shift to add them all together. And then I have to use the Pathfinder to merge them. so that I can just use the pencil tool all in one place and clean them up. And then when I want to get back to the proper angle, I just double click on that rotate hand tool. I almost done. So many lines in this. So I sympathize with those of you doing buildings and all the lines that come with the buildings. Nope, I want to leave that out. But as the illustrator, you are the visual storyteller. So you decide what's important, what needs to be shown, what needs to be kept. What should be colored in, like full bleed or not. All right. And now all that I have left, I can turn off my sketch and see. Looks pretty good. It's little things that can be cleaned up, but again, I'm trying not to be a perfectionist here. There's something in illustration called a deadline style. And that means you do whatever you need to do to meet the deadline. It doesn't mean you're you're not talented or professional or whatever. It just means you do whatever you need to do to meet the deadline. For some reason, it looks like there's a stroke on this. So I'm going to make sure there isn't by saying uh, object path outline stroke. Huh. A 
It's really odd. And Illustrator still confuses me quite a bit of the time. <laughs> so there's the stroke. So I'm just going to turn it off. And hopefully that's the only one. I don't know why I wouldn't outline it. So that helps me see it when I'm trying to clean it up with the pencil tool. It just won't let me. So when it bugs me like this, I save it and then I'll reopen. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not good. <laughs> Command Z. All right. So I'm going to save it. Then I will figure that out. And it looks like I lost something else. Turn the sketch back on. Oh, I just haven't done that top line yet. Okay. So maybe before I do any of that, I want to merge it. There we go. Try to merge everything. Try to select everything. Merge it. And that's why this is giving me problems. Why? Let me just try taking the stroke off of this. Hmm. Try outlining the stroke. So odd. Did everything the same way. Let's try using the eraser. Okay, that worked. And now the pencil tool is working. Kinda. Interesting. So there's a separate path. So this is the problem solving you sometimes have to do in Illustrator. So if I turn that path off, what does that do? So yeah, there's just a, a path that got created that's a stroke. So I'm just going to delete that. It's separate. And now everything should be rational again. Use the small selection tool. The pencil tool should work. And I can even just select and delete things that are annoying. And I can use the smooth tool as well, which is under the pencil tool. Don't forget the smooth tool is an option for you. OK, now I got all this stuff. And now I should be able to merge everything without it filling up with black, but I'm not sure why it is. So I'm going to do a quick, well, let me just finish it off, the sketching, and then I'll move it on to the gray to make sure I don't have any white shapes in there somehow. Because sometimes things happen, even though I've just been pretty disciplined about just using a black blob brush. Illustrator can be tricky. The magnificence. This is more about energy than about outlining something directly. So I'm trying to have strokes with energy. And I want them to connect so they're easy to color, so they're filled in. And some angles are easier to draw than others. And I can always clean up the corners with the pencil tool. But sometimes the things that are easiest to pencil by hand are the hardest to, to ink digitally. Ah, 